anyway, my late husband and I ended up skiing up here one winter uh, after Tom Pileski uh, groomed it, uh, a local uh, member. And then after his passing away, I started working with the Heritage chapter on the trail, both the maintenance and the building, and I heard about the need for the bridge. So I wanted to donate part of the uh, funds for the bridge. So then, switch to our um, one housekeeping uh, chore. There's a latrine up at that campsite, and there's a latrine at the campsite over there. If you're going to stay and do a little hike to the west side, and you might need that. Anyway, we've got the thank yous listed, and Andrea, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Andrea Ketzler, the Executive Director for the North Country Trail Association, and I'm visiting from Michigan. I'm here to celebrate with you all this incredible accomplishment. Um, the North Country Trail is planned to be probably close to 5,000 miles long. Uh, we have about 4,700 miles in the route currently um, through eight states. But how we get that done is all about local, local, local partnership, volunteers, all of this work that you guys have done, you know, that everybody put into making this trail a reality. So I thank you so much for everything that you all have done. I want you to remember when you see something like this, how much work has gone into it, um, but also the vision, you know, this vision for a national scenic trail that spans eight states. This is the largest public-private partnership project, I think, in the country. Um, the fact that we have so many different entities working together to pull this trail together um, is just really an incredible, incredible effort. And thank you again, and I'm just really um, excited to be here. Thank you. Kevin? Kevin Stephens, our president of the Heritage Chapter. Well, well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to see all these people here. It's got a lot of work goes into building this trail and a bridge like this is like the gateway to continuing to build more trail. We have 16 miles of trail currently in the Heritage Chapter here and it just opens the route for us to keep on building the trail. This trail eventually is going to go over to the Highway 169 parking lot and right into Copper Falls oh, State Park. So it would be nice to get that hikes completed and there's one more bridge down the ways that has to be completed. But as, as she was saying, it's all about all the partnerships, the volunteers that work it. Most of the trail is built by volunteers. You know, I was talking to Andrea across the trail. There was 91,000 volunteer hours across the North Country Trail last year. So that's a lot of dedicated time and people. But we can't do it without the help of the, you know, the state, the county, the foresters, local landowners. We're talking about there's, there's like 30 chapters across the uh, you know, U.S. There's three chapters here in Wisconsin. I was talking to Gaylord Yos, who's been a member forever. You know, 1980 is when the North Country Trail was first approved by Congress and he, he was around back then and he was telling me in 1996 they, they decided to form the three chapters, the Brule, the Shaquamigan, and the Heritage. So they started that and he's so active member, he does you know, trail <laughs> correspondence and our newsletter for us. So thank you for that. And, um, just remember 20 years ago when we were looking at where will this trail go, we came up onto this and they said it's going to be, take a pretty nice bridge to get over this. <laughs> well that is a very nice bridge, that's more than I ever dreamed that that bridge would be. And so, you know, that is, that's telling about some of the stories of the dedicated workers we had. Jim Barrow, who was the first vice president of our chapter, when his health was failing, he'd walk up and lean against a tree and he'd build the trail that he could reach. And he told me, I build it over to the next tree and he leaned against the next tree. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so that was kind of dedication he had. And I see that in members like Bethany and Joe, that they're going to be dedicated forever and we really appreciate it. So 
thanks everyone for showing up. So this is Kelly Wickman. She's with um, Senator Tammy Baldwin, and I'd like her to just speak a little bit to the parity issue. Sure. Um, first, I just want to say, um, looking at the bridge and all the folks that are out here, um, that 91,000 hours of volunteer time that's gone into this chunk, that's pretty incredible, especially at a time when it's sometimes hard to get people to show up and volunteer for things. And um, while Tammy, of course, sends her regrets that she can't be here, I am very thankful that I get to come to this beautiful place on a Friday afternoon in September and call it work. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. Um, as uh, Bethany suggested, the, there is a parity bill in Congress. It's called the National City Trails Parity Bill, for Parity Act. And it's been reintroduced several times now. It is bipartisan, it is bicameral, and if uh, it becomes law, then it would make three trails, including the North Country Trail and the Ice Age Trail and the New England Trail uh, units, which would then allow them to receive additional federal funding and resources, staff that's associated with other Park Service properties, which I'm sure all of those volunteers would appreciate the extra help and funding that um, could go into improving access like this for folks who really enjoy these wild and beautiful places. So um, I, I don't have any updates for you in the moment, but know that it, it has been something that um, is on Tammy's mind every, se every session. I hope that it'll come back. I'm hopeful that we can move it forward as we've had a much stronger focus on getting folks into the great outdoors given the times that we live in. So thank you for your long-term dedication, all of the work that you're doing to um, build and improve and maintain these wonderful places. And um, best of luck to you going forward. So Beth Myers, our um, state representative, you want to say a few words? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid to do two things, talk and listen. So I do both and I enjoy equally listening and talking. But today I want to thank everyone for being here and I think it is so appropriate that this section of the trail is named the heritage section because what you're doing today and what you've done for the last 91,000 hours and many years and hard work will be inherited by someone going forward. You're leaving a personal legacy for future generations. It really makes me kind of choke up because one of the things we've been through this last year, too many of us were in our homes for a very long time. And people in urban areas, I feel sorry for them because they had nowhere to go that resembles anything like this. And opening this up to everyone is a fantastic thing to do. Matt and I were talking on the way down about the younger generation. They're really good with this, right? Boy, Roman knuckle locks, do you remember that's what we did with our thumbs. And they can like send spaceships into space faster. But we need to have the younger generation outside so they learn to value what you all know. That this is a special spot in Wisconsin, in Iron County, but also I'm going to say in the world. What we have here is very unique and you're working to make sure it is preserved and protected for everyone going forward. I can't thank you enough for your dedication. And I was thrilled to drive that road. Thank you, Eric. It was yeah. great coming yeah. down yeah. our street. Yeah. 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 And Bethany, thank you for your family commitment to this bridge. Um, it's wonderful. Thank you, everyone. So we're gonna switch uh, around a little bit right now and Matt Davis just introduce yourself and tell a little bit about what you're helping us with. Yep so Matthew Davis I am the regional trail coordinator for what I consider the best parts of the North Country Trail the western three states North Dakota Minnesota and here in Wisconsin and I had the uh, privilege of taking over for Bill it's big big shoes to fill uh, but my role is to really support the volunteers to help them uh, get more trail on the ground, get the trail maintained, get more people out onto the trail, all of that stuff. And really the best part of my job is, is getting to work with the volunteers. There's some people that are just dear friends that out, get out and work on this trail. And without the volunteers, the trail simply would not exist. So I would encourage everybody, if you're not already a North Country Trail volunteer, there is a way that you can get involved and make a difference in this trail. You don't have to be young and strong. You can be old. You can work behind a computer. You can plow through the woods and figure out where the trail is going to go and just about everything in between. So if, if 
being part of something that's very inspiring appeals to you, talk to somebody involved with either the chapter or the association and figure out a way that you can get involved because there is a role to play. Uh, my kids have grown up volunteering on the North Country Trail and I don't know if there's anything better as a parent than to hear your kids talk about their trail because they are going to be the future of the North Country Trail. That's why all these people are doing this is because they want people in future generations to be able to come and enjoy this trail and enjoy the beautiful places that it goes. So, thank you. I want to talk to Bill Mankey. He's our past Wisconsin coordinator, as Matt sure said. Oh, and um, <laughs> he's also um, head of the Wisconsin Rovers that helps build bridges as well. So I am so happy to be here today, and I'm so glad that so many people turned out for this great event to dedicate this bridge and dedicate it in the memory of Bill Thomas. So I am currently at NCTA, North Country Trail Association. Excuse me, as I go through my little presentation, I'll spit out NCTA. Uh, volunteer. Prior to that, I worked for 19 years as the Regional Trail Coordinator for Wisconsin and part of the time in the UP. And Andrea was my, basically my supervisor. So I'm tickled to see her here today. Uh, and prior to that, I worked for the National Park Service for nine years. So my task today is to try to give you a broad history about this bridge. So my question is, how long does a bridge like this take to build? Well, I think Eric's probably going to talk to you with the details in a little bit. He's probably going to say, oh, three weeks or a month. I'm going to say 25 years. And here's why. So, the National Park Service is the federal agency that is charged with administering this trail. And in 1983, they published their comprehensive management plan for the trail, including its route. And between the west end of the Euler Trail at Weber Lake and Copper Falls State Park, they had a straight line. And that's because they didn't know where the trail was going to go. So then in about 1992 or a year or so after that, when I was started working for the Park Service, uh, we had always thought that the trail was 3,200 miles long. <laughs> so we had a through hiker and he swore that based on his records, it was more like 4,100 miles. So I sat down at the desk and pulled out every single topographic map from Vermont, New York border to North Dakota. And I would try to sketch a feasible route on that map. And I called it the pie in the sky route. But it took into consideration things like topography and wetlands that you didn't want to cross and where you might cross rivers and those kinds of things. Even that work that I did did not come past Wren Falls. I think it was a few miles north of here. I'm not sure anymore. Then in about the mid-90s, uh, uh, Jim Burrow, I think he was actually the president for a while, Kevin. Yes, he was. Yep. Uh, Jim Burrow was the local chapter president, and he sent a letter to the National Park Service that said, well, they had been up here doing some work and they scouting around and, and uh, again visited Wren Falls, and he sent this letter that said, you have to bring the trail past Wren Falls. Uh, it's just a spectacular place. So beginning shortly after that, in the mid-90s, uh, until about 2014 or so, uh, every time I was up north and over in this part of the state at least in my job I would stop and look at Wren Falls and we'd always walk out on the little point directly west of the falls and look at the river and scheme in our brains and think we got to get a bridge across here because that gives us access as Kevin said to the Iron County forest lands to the west of the river and allows us to move on toward Copper Falls State Park. So we always looked up there at the top of the hill. There was a huge boulder in the middle of the stream that stood up about as high as the cliffs on the sides. And we always thought that we would go from the east side to that boulder with one span, and then from the boulder to the west side with another longer span. But anyway, over the years, I brought many, many people here. National Park Service officials, DNR officials, NCTA officials, all kinds of people and we'd always walk out and scheme about this bridge but <clears throat> in my estimation as a as a trail builder i always figured that if 
either the National Park Service or the DNR were to build this bridge, they would have to do the design work, the contractual work, all the compliance work, and contract for the construction. And I always felt, and I still feel to this day, that that would be a $250,000 bridge. Well, none of us had that kind of money, so nothing went anywhere. Now, jumping ahead to 2014, I set up a meeting with a former forest administrator, uh, Joe Varis, and Joe brought along a recreation person from his staff by the name of Tim Crawl. And, uh, and we met up there and we talked about the bridge and it was really interesting. Uh, Joe started acting like a mountain goat. He was climbing down the face of the cliff and jumping the river and crawled up on this huge boulder. And he says, yeah, he says, I think we can put a footing up on this boulder and we can make those two spans work. So, you know, there we were talking about all this and, and Tim spoke up and Tim is just a, one of these guys that has learned a fantastic amount of things through the years, through practical experience. And he spoke up and he says, you know, Joe, he says, I think we can build this bridge with our county workforce. He said, uh, we built one almost as long down there at Saxon Harbor and we did that for only $6,000. Well, man, my ears lit up, <laughs> and I said, well, if you can do it for anywhere, even three times that amount, we can raise that kind of money. So let me back up. We've worked with four Iron County Forest Administrators over the years since this was first schemed in the mid-90s. Anyway, uh, since that time, we sort of set up this more formal arrangement with Iron County that they would look into building the bridge, and we would look into funding it. And... Uh, so then about uh, 2016, in fact July, some of you may remember what happened. And if you don't, it was that 15 inches of rain fell overnight. And it literally destroyed the county's big campground and marina down at Saxon Harbor. And by then, Eric was on board, I believe, and had nothing but a lap full of headaches. Uh, you know, it was just a terrible mess down there. And I think he had to learn, as he sat in his chair, how to deal with some of that, those contractual things and environmental things. But I know it was a job, so the trail kind of got slipped to the back burner again for a period of time. Also about that time, as Bethany mentioned, uh, she learned about this bridge and uh, wanted to make a significant financial donation to build the bridge and have it in memory of her husband, Bill, who they had been here together to look at Wren Falls. So in 2016, Bethany received NCTA's prestigious uh, Blue Blazes Benefactor Award for her contribution toward this bridge. So then uh, we had we had the start of some money and the, and the chapter Raised some more from another gentleman named Ron Kine, who made a big Don Horn. Oh, not Kine. Ron Horn. Horn. Yep. Ron Kine's one of your Somebody friends. else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we had some money on hand. And I'd say probably during the years of, I don't know, 16, 17. Oh, let me back up. The only bright spot in the Saxon Harbor devastation was that Eric and Tim thought they could salvage some of the steel trusses that were underneath supporting the uh, docks to the marina and use them here and that would lessen the cost. Well in the end that didn't pan out. But nevertheless, uh, probably for a year or two Eric was working on getting the DNR permits and you know lining up getting the plans finalized and approved and arranging the paperwork with ncta on how it was all going to be paid for that sort of thing and then in i believe it was july of 2018 uh eric and his gang moved in some heavy equipment and some materials and they put in this fantastic bridge and it was as i understand it it was tim crawl's Kind of swan song. He was he was the leader on this project, and uh, 
I understand it's the last big project he did for the county before he retired. So uh, I wish Tim was here today so you could meet and thank him too, but he couldn't make it. Uh, anyway, as soon as they got the bridge done, a couple months later in September, I brought in the Wisconsin Roving Trail Crew, and we put on some of the finishing touches. We built the trail from Ren Falls down the hill. We put in the little wooden ramp at the end of the main bridge ramp, and we winched a boulder up from the edge of the river and ground it flat with a diamond abrasive type thing and installed the plaque. So that's kind of the broad history and why I say a bridge like this takes 25 years of scheming and basically like anything else on the trail it takes a great deal of patience and persistence. But it's a fantastic bridge uh, and it really opens up that country west of the river for us. Okay, thank you. That's my yeah. history. And now Eric's going to just talk a little bit about the bill. We're going to see the slideshow at the Iron County Memorial Building. but Right, there's lots of pictures on the slideshow. I'm sure that you'll be able to see pictures of the actual construction. But as Bill was talking, it was it, I took over as forest administrator in 2015. Just got my feet wet and then had Saxon Harbor show up and started to learn about a lot of other things I never thought I would know about. Um, but in the background of all of that, all the time, was the North Country Trail and their expansion and their desire to get this bridge built. Um, so it was in 2018 we come out, Tim and I came out, and actually decided on what spot we thought the bridge could be built. And took some measurements, took some photos, you may see some of those photos of the bridge location before the bridge is there when the trees are all still standing there. That was in 2018, and then we started the permitting process with the DNR. Um, we started the engineering approvals for the design of the bridge. As Bill said, Tim Crawl was a recreation maintenance technician for Iron County Forestry for 30 years. Um, Tim built wooden bridges, he built wooden structures, he built roads, he did a little bit of everything. He's jack of all trades. Tim drew the plans for the bridge. It's a two-span bridge. It's got a 30-foot span on this end and a 50-foot span over the main channel of the river for an 80-foot total length bridge with 16-foot ramps on both sides. Through his other projects over the years with Iron County, Tim came up with the idea of building a steel A-frame and dragging it across the river and assembling it on the other side and cabling off to a stump we brought our excavator down and sat here and we used our excavator to lift the line and pull tight the cable across the river so that we could have a pulley and a rope and simply pull the steel across to the other side. Pull the jackhammers across to the other side. Um, my my three-man maintenance crew spent about a week out here jackhammering, air hammering holes into the, into the native rock getting the pipe stood up and grouted in, rebarred in. Um, I would say that process took about a week and a half for them to do. Um, and then they had to let it sit for three weeks while everything cured. Then they came back out and they drug the, my three foresters with, and much to their chagrin, they got to carry concrete across the creek. <laughs> they carried all of the concrete you see down there. They mixed by hand with cement mixer right here at the top of the hill and they carried it with a five gallon bucket to the other side, one after another. Um, foresters don't like carrying concrete buckets. <laughs> um, that steel construction, um, the welding, the, re the decking, the finishing work took about another two weeks. So the whole bridge project start to finish, I would say took approximately seven weeks, but three weeks in the middle of that was just letting concrete gear. So it was started the very last week of May of 2019 and it was completed the first week of July of 2019 is when the bridge was actually done. Um, we were able to drive pickups right here, get all of our equipment down here, um, and then we just um, abandoned the road behind you that comes out of the parking area. Um, and it really was, it was Tim Swan song. Tim retired from the county in August of 2020 but due to COVID and his built up vacation time, he actually was done working in late March of 2020. So 
this project was was one that he'd been thinking about for a long for many years after he had been out here with Bill. Um, and my staff really made this happen. I mean I was I, I'm the organizer and the planner and keep the ship going in the right direction, but those our county staff is the one that builds these things and in many cases comes up with the ideas on how to get it done. Um, the good part is, is Bill didn't give me a $250,000 budget, so we That's built right. it for 28 grand. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'm happy that it's here. And when the North Country Trail is complete through Iron County, it'll almost be 99% on the Iron County Forest when it's all and done. So it's a great asset to Iron County, and we're glad to be a part of it. Thank you. I just want to mention that Eric here uh, this year at the North Country Trail Awards, he was um, on, honored with an award. What's the award the, for, for being an agency that works with the North Country Trail? Friend of the Trail. The Friend of the Trail Award. Very well deserved. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. He's worked on the trail for 17 years, and he is the trail maintainer of the year 2021. Yeah, and if you didn't know what he did, is last year, like Kevin's near Kenosha and Racine, he lives. I live in Madison. Mike Stafford lives in Milwaukee. These two right here maintained the whole trail last year by themselves because we couldn't come up and work on the trail. So thank you guys. Another thank you, um, I'd like to everybody to meet Pat Hansen. He's the um, head of the Anderson Township and he keeps Casey Sag primable. Right there. <laughs> and I, Wait. I had hoped that Tom Innes was here as well. He's the gurney um, um, town supervisor that keeps the other part of the road. We got Tom Pod. No. <laughs> and, uh, I'll have to interrupt here, but uh, we've just uh, had a couple of honorees here. But uh, our past president, uh, Bethany, uh, um, well, anyway, our past president, he got the greatest achieve, uh, greatest award of all with the North Country Trail Association. That is the uh, Tom Gilbert Lifetime Achievement Award. And Tom Gilbert was president of the uh, National Park Service for many years, the superintendent. So I'm that's where that uh, name came into focus. So our past president, but he's still active up here. He comes up from Milwaukee. Mike his, Stafford. Wasn't Stafford. his mother-in-law died or somebody? Yeah. yeah his mother-in-law passed away. So he's yeah. But no, Joe, Trail Maintainer of the Year, that's the most prestigious award. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has been at the chapter for a lot longer than I have. Yes. All right. Okay, we're just going to have a little short closing. Um, Kevin's going to lead a hike to the west side of um, the falls, and it's a lot better view. <laughs> and uh, so we don't have a bridge to nowhere. We've got a bridge. <laughs> and beyond that, um, there's another mile of trail or more that's really finished to a campsite. And then beyond that, we're working on, you know, uh, getting to Highway 169 in our parking lot. Uh, it goes up to a fire tower footings the actual rock footings that was on top of the hill. That's where the trail kind of dead ends right now. Okay. Um, a slideshow is going to be um, shown at the Iron County Memorial Building, um, as I mentioned, of the building of the bridge. And then um, with what's going on in the community, we're having our potluck at the Iron County Farmers Market after that. And you're all welcome because I we've made Sloppy Joe's for a hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for coming and good to see all the people I haven't seen in a while. So. All right. So. Good job,